the effect of exercise on people with this illness um, is, is very characteristic and it is really a diagnostic, a key diagnostic feature of the illness. So that when people exercise, their muscles run out of energy. They run out of, of the capacity to perform exercise. So what we term exercise-induced muscle fatigue is, I believe, what is, is probably the hallmark of this illness. Um, interestingly enough, when people exercise beyond their limitations, they will also get what we call post-exertional malaise, post-exertional fatigue. So it, this, this can sometimes be delayed for several hours or even 24 hours so that they uh, go to the point of their exercise tolerance and stop. But the following day, perhaps, they then feel that they've got an exacerbation of their symptoms because of this symptom of, of post-exertional malaise. Exercise tolerance is a term that we would normally apply to exactly how long someone can exercise for before fatigue sets in, quite often pain sets in, and then if they continue after that, actual weakness uh, and unsteadiness of the, of the muscles will occur. Um, it's, it's a very variable factor with people with ME, so someone at the mild end of the spectrum with this illness, they may be able to go for a walk for half a mile, perhaps even longer, um, before they're starting to feel fatigue and weakness. Whereas someone who is more moderately affected may only be able to walk perhaps 100, 200 yards um, at absolute maximum before they reach the point at which they cannot carry on any further. And of course people at the severe end of the spectrum who are wheelchair bound, bed bound, um, house bound, um, they would have very, very limited um, uh, tolerance for any form of physical activity or, or, or exercise. Um, the other, I suppose, characteristic of this is it depends what sort of exercise activity is being undertaken. So it, if it's a, a short burst of terribly strenuous or physical activity, like say, trying to go off for a ride on a bike or a run or something which you know someone with ME would not be able to do. But if you put someone with ME through that sort of exercise, their, their ability to sustain that form of high intensity exercise will be very, very short. Whereas if it is low intensity exercise, walking for instance, as I say, there would be a wide variation in the tolerability um, as to how far someone would be able to do that. The effect of ME on the muscles is this symptom which I've already described of exercise induced muscle fatigue. So we have this range of muscle symptoms which develop progressively after someone has been doing any form of activity. So fatigue will set in in the muscle, Pain will probably set in in the muscle, but not always. And then if the activity is pushed on beyond the person's uh, limitations, actual weakness will occur in the muscles. To avoid getting these muscle symptoms and overexertion, um, to a certain extent requires a process of trial and error. Um, it's something that people with this illness learn to develop. And <clears throat> the way in which we try to make people understand the best way to cope with this key symptom of ME is, is through a process of what we call pacing. And this involves very careful management of activity and rest relaxation. So what we would advise patients with this illness to do is to pace their activities so that they are not exceeding their limitations. They are dividing their physical and their mental activities into little small chunks. So they do a little bit of physical activity within their limitation. They then have a period of rest or relaxation. Perhaps after a bit of physical activity, they might do a bit of mental activity and then they have a period of rest and relaxation. What is important not to do is and this takes people into what we call a boom and bust cycle, is to push on to the point of physical exertion or physical exhaustion, fatigue, um, and then stop. 
because then you are just going to get a, a prolonged period when you're not going to be able to do anything and return to activities. So it is very important to try and pace activities with little bits of activity, gaps in between, followed by little bits of activity. The difference between pacing and graded exercise therapy very much depends on who is recommending uh, the particular form of treatment. But in very simple terms, pacing is living within your limitations, um, but at the same point gradually trying to, within those limitations, and the fact that you are having little gaps, little periods of rest and relaxation between activities, gradually trying to increase the amount of time you are spending on a physical activity or a mental activity, but certainly not pushing yourself beyond your fatigue um, barrier. Um, graded exercise is, is a rather more structured and proactive form of activity management in which people are, if you like, uh, often encouraged to push beyond their boundaries and not necessarily um, take a rest when you would be taking a rest during pacing. And our experience, certainly in patient surveys, is that 90% of people who respond to patient surveys on activity management find that pacing is a very effective form of activity management and very few people report any sort of adverse effects to it. Whereas well, if you look at patient opinion on graded exercise, you will find that up to about 50% of people in these surveys report that graded exercise actually makes them worse. But there is a small number of people who find graded exercise to be helpful in their management. And I suspect this reflects the fact, going back to my previous points about this big umbrella of people that come under this term chronic fatigue syndrome, that there are people who have an illness at one end of the spectrum, which may well be more of a psychiatric uh, type of illness, who respond to this type of approach as opposed to the people at the other end of the spectrum with very much a physical ME type illness, who are much more likely to respond to pacing. The way to deal with relapses in relation to pacing is, first of all, to try and make sure that you can re recognise as soon as possible that you've got an exacerbation of symptoms going on or that your illness is going into a relapse phase. Um, to a certain extent, this is fairly recognisable because most of the things that we know cause ME are also the sort of things that tend to cause a relapse. So relapses are in particular caused by infections, sometimes they can be caused by vaccinations. Um, stress seems to play a particularly important role in causing um, relapses and sometimes um, physical trauma. And we talked about road accidents, we talked about surgical operations can cause a relapse. So if you are aware that any factors are going on, like an infection that is likely to cause a relapse, you need to modify your pacing program to take that into account. So you would drop the uh, degree of activity you were doing, both physical and mental, within those little chunks um, to a lower level. You would decrease the time you were doing um, involved in those activities and you would at the same time extend the period of rest and relaxation between your, your activities. So it, it's a very careful balance that has to be struck and again as with learning how to do pacing it's very often a question of trial and error um, before you actually pick up and, and learn how to do it properly. The mitochondria play a very important role in ME. Mitochondria are tiny little um, what we call organelles within the muscle and they're rather like Duracell batteries within muscle. They're the places where chemical reactions take place which break down sugars which we take in from our diet to actually form energy in, in the form of something called ATP. And we know from work actually the very initial stuff on, on mitochondrial dysfunction in this illness was done on some of my own skeletal muscle and this was done over 30 years ago and the results were published in The Lancet. We demonstrated with 
uh, someone called Professor George Rada from Oxford, the fact that when I exercised, there was an abnormally increased amount of lactic acid being produced in the muscle, which was indicative of a problem within the mitochondria. And at the same time, some research was being done by a colleague of mine, Professor Mina, Mina Bean, up in Glasgow, which was actually again taking little bits of, of muscle and looking at them under the microscope. And these experiments under the microscope showed that there were actual structural changes in the mitochondria. So we had evidence of biochemical abnormalities in the mitochondria from the magnetic resonance spectroscopy studies at Oxford and structural abnormalities from the electron microscopy studies that were being done in Glasgow. So we know that there seems to be a problem with mitochondrial function in ME. This may play a very important part in explaining why people have this very characteristic symptom of exercise muscle, uh, exercise induced muscle fatigue and sometimes pain in this illness. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube of tweet naar het MECVS vereniging of mail naar wvp.me-cvsvereniging.nl. De beste vragen worden in een volgende video behandeld.